Hey guys, once again, welcome to the Therapy Room. If this is your first time on our show, you know the drill. Head on down. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Do like, share, subscribe, share it with your friends. And of course, let the DJs know how you find their sets. Leave them a comment. Spread good love, good vibes through music. That's all we're here to do. On this week's episode, I'm very happy to have a buddy of mine. We connected recently at one of your events. I'm going to bring him on the camera and he's going to tell you more about himself and what he does for the collective and the music scene here in Singapore. So without further ado, one of the founders of Busi Temple, I said it right for the first time. Please welcome my buddy, How Rong, live and loud right here in the therapy room. What's up, bro? Welcome to the studio, man. Um, thank you for taking your time out and uh, coming by. Uh, there's only one rule here. Don't worry about the camera, the microphone. We keep it real, we keep it raw. We just speak our mind. Uh, for our viewers that don't know you, bro, in a gist, what do you do, man? Like, like tell us more about yourself. Okay, so... Oh. Uh, I'm Hao Rong, and I'm part of Busi Temple. So I'm also a DJ, uh, like in my free time. Uh, and yeah, so with Busi Temple, we organize queer raves that uh, have a focus on hard techno music and just like whatever that means in the context of techno and Southeast Asia. Okay. And what we really want to do with Busi Temple is create a safe space for the queer community, especially like um, uh, trans, um, non-binary, and uh, femmes of the of the queer scene, mm -hmm. because basically we it arose from us like actually wanting this space because uh, most of the parties, especially like last year or the years before, is centered around like cis gay male, so very like muscle gays, and then like the music is all R and B or you know it's just music that we didn't vibe to, mm -hmm. so it's just a personal preference, and we started um, throwing our own parties to have our small community gatherings, and now it's grown to like a really big <laughs> scale. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in a nutshell, that's what I do. And yeah, I also like uh, DJ for other events, um, like sometimes FOMO HOMO, which mm -hmm. is run by Joey, they also get me to play, mm -hmm. which has been really nice. Yeah. Nice. We move away from Basi Temple, uh, yeah. Busi Temple away. I always keep saying Basi, I don't know why, but yeah. Um, how did this DJing journey start, bro? Let's go back in time when you first started, like you told yourself like, hey man, I want to go step behind the decks. What were the inspirations? What got you interested in standing behind the decks, bro? Talk to us about the journey. Okay, so actually it's quite a cliche story. So I, I was studying in Berlin mm -hmm. and then actually I had no interest in electronic music actually. And then I had a flatmate and then my flatmate likes to DJ. Then he just showed me some things and, and then I was like, oh, this is quite fun. And I went to like raves there. I went to see, explore like the scene there, especially yeah, the queer queer raves, queer parties. There's just so much going on. Mm -hmm. So I think I was really lucky that my start, my journey with electronic music started in Berlin actually. Mm -hmm. So I was quite heavily influenced by that. And then uh, after my studies, I came back to work here, and I was like looking for a space that's somehow similar. And I, I checked everywhere over on Instagram. Like I found like headquarters and all these kind of places for techno. But for queer techno events, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. Then we met with some friends and we were like doing our own small scale raves. Mm -hmm. And that's really how Busi Temple started. So uh, I would say that like the main co-founder is like Zinan and Minsu. Yeah, they, they were the ones that actually started the name Busi Temple mm -hmm. because they moved into this flat and they were like, Oh, like we are like having fun, and then they just made called the place our Busi Temple. Like mm -hmm. Busi stands for boy pussy. Okay. So I know, I know a lot of people are like Basi, but yeah. it's actually Busi. Okay, okay. So it's like that was their temple, and then we met at the rave, and then like we started like, hey, why don't we form this community and through our own events? So then we started to form like uh, actual collective, and then we just keep like roping in random people like Aki Hassan, Kai uh, also roped in, and then Joe, which is Chili Sweetie. Uh, then Nidia also, so it's a lot of people were roped in along the way. There was also Sam, and like it's kind of a fluid group, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's I think that's the core. Nice. Yeah. I want you to share with uh, our viewers and uh, those who know your collective. Actually, how did you guys start? That that story that you just shared with us. Oh. You know, you you're allowed to see it on camera. It's fine. Don't worry. Okay. Um, that whole cave or like you know that. Uh, yeah. yeah. That thing that you did. Uh, share, share with us uh, the story. Because people, bro, they, they, a lot of people don't know your struggles. How do you guys start? And like, how do you guys actually become friends? Finding like-minded people in the, like what you said, you came all the way back from Berlin to Singapore. 
you hit all the techno clubs in Singapore and there wasn't a, a calling, a safe space for you guys. So I had to create my own safe space, right? Yeah. And through, uh, I would say, uh, I wouldn't say illegal, lah, bro. It's just, a, it's just a party that you guys threw with friends. Like, uh, share with us the story, man. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so, sometimes I skip the details. But um, yeah, it, it's just like I had a friend of uh, who knew that I like ex- played with DJing a bit because back then I was really like at home just for fun, mm-hmm. you know. Like I had no ambition. I really had no ambition to be like I want to DJ in clubs. It's just like this is fun mm-hmm. and like I like this music. And then yeah, he was like, "Oh, we're having like this small gathering in a tunnel. It's a secret location, but it's a tunnel underground." And and then they were like, "Oh, it's a queer space. It's really safe." And why don't you like DJ for fun or like play some music? So then I brought my like JBL party box down a hill. It was so heavy that I was like carrying it down and then I brought it to the tunnel. Then I just like played some techno and then everyone was really enjoying it. And I felt, I think that was the first time I really felt I really enjoy DJing because like it's the right crowd. They kind of get my music. They let me experiment. Mm-hmm. It's not like they come here, they're like, I want this track. Can you please play Bad Bunny? That mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, like, I know that's something that DJs have to face as a profession. But I was really lucky, like, with Busi Temple and the, that first tunnel rave. We just, like, played whatever we want, and we stayed there until, like, the next morning. And it was, awesome it was really, really fun. Like, uh, I, I was kind of like, I can't believe I'm in Singapore. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, that's how it started. I hope you guys throw an event like that in future again. Lah. Please call me, okay? Um, the kind of music that you guys played. So, the first time Therapy Room supported you guys, um, and you said, oh bro, we're going to play like techno music and all, and obviously in my mind, techno is a different kind of techno, right? Exactly like what you just said. Yeah. Music is therapy, we believe. What does this music do for you, man, bro? Like, like why are you so attached to it? Why, why do you want to dish it out? You want people to listen to you? Explain to me, like in your own words, and even for all the fan base of Busi Temple, there must be a reason that like, they resonate with this kind of music, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what does it do for you and what do you think it does for them, bro? And why do you want to educate or play this kind of stuff out there at your parties? Yeah, I think, thanks for that question. It's like really, I feel like music, f- because I, I only started with electronic music like maybe three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. Like I started DJing at the same time I was learning, uh, listening to it. But since young, I really like music. Like I, I did classical music, piano, all that. Like Asian kid, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's always like an emotional outlet for me. Like without music, I don't know how to get through a lot of things mm-hmm. in my life. Like as, especially as a queer person, there's a lot of like frustration we go through, and like, um, yeah, just like hardship or feeling very oppressed or that you don't feel safe, like all these kind of very difficult emotions that you can't really like talk to. I mean, you can go for therapy, like actual mm-hmm. therapy, mm-hmm. but on a daily basis, uh, music it just like really feels like you can re- you can listen to a song or you can you can play music and it releases that emotion. It's like cathartic, mm-hmm. and I think that's why we we play such hard music because like it reflects, th- it allows you to like really let go of whatever you're feeling, or like just like don't care what's going on and just lose yourself in the music. Mm-hmm. And I think for queer people, like especially our crowd, the, this really hard music just really makes you feel good and makes you kind of forget about your whole week, that you, you're maybe you're like stressful uh, life, especially a lot of people maybe at home, their situation is not good mm-hmm. because they don't feel like they can be themselves. And then at our parties, they can really like be whoever the, whoever the F they yeah. Can't swear. Whoever the fuck they want, you know, for real, like, they just, they come, they really impress us too, because, like, I don't know, at the event, Father's Womb, you saw, like, the the way people dress up is completely, you wouldn't even imagine it. Yeah. So that's part of, like, our idea for all events, that we want to build a world where people can dress however they want and be creative, and that that also reflects the music, yeah. So for me, like, the music brings you on a journey, and it's also to share, because, a lot of classical musicians also say like like Yo Yo Ma, you know the cellist. He's like every mu- performance for him is to invite like all the audience to be in one space together and share that space and the music. So it's not like he's there and he's like I'm the best cellist in the world, which he kind of is, and he just like 
uh, show off, you know. But he really like invite the audience to be part of it and react to them. And I think that's what we want to do with our DJing. Yeah. Like for me, the best DJs are the ones who are like, I feel like they react to me and like I'm vibing with the crowd is like perfect. That's the, that's what I like most about music, yeah. I really like, so I saw your artwork. It's, it's very fierce in your face. And then you guys have a message of like, this is your safe space, you know, uh, stuff like, uh, please ask for permission and all that kind of stuff. I really like that you guys said a lot of parties don't do that. And of course, we know all the nonsense that happens uh, in those kinds of parties. Bro, um, any hardships throwing these kind of parties, bro? Like, do, do, do people like, is there a stigma behind it? Uh, you know, do you guys face like people like, hey, why you throw this kind of party? Like, even from your own friends or family and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you want to share with us any stories if you have at the top of your head? Yeah, I think we've been quite lucky so far because all of us, like, n maybe we, are, we can't, like, we can't dress the way we dress at our parties at home or something, but uh, at least for me, like, my family knows that I throw parties and stuff and they're, like, chill with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't be, like, super happy, I feel, but they're not going to, like, scold me about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm quite old already, so I don't think <laughs> that will happen. And, but uh, I think... It's not really like people saying that this party is like weird or whatever, but sometimes we get, uh, I, especially the earlier raves, it was like we had to contend with a lot of situations with like maybe someone was aggressed or like there was some aggressive men or in the crowd or something like that. That's why we always put in our marketing that uh, femme forward, queer forward. I know like some people say it's not inclusive to put that, mm -hmm. but it's just like, to make the majority of our community feel safe. And we really liked it that at Father's Womb, there was really zero incidences. Nothing really. So it was a miracle for real, because even the, like, most of the guys who came, they were so respectful. I've never seen like straight white men so respectful. <laughs> no, for real, because they were like really drinking a lot. Mm. They buy like 10 drinks, then they just stay like behind, and they let everyone go to the front. Mm -hmm. So we were really like happy because we think in, in this instance, like our marketing of like telling the message that fam should go forward, and then if you're like a cis male, especially straight, just like leave space for them, mm -hmm. and everyone really understood that. Nice. So, yeah, I, I feel like uh, overall we were pretty lucky that there's not really much like oppression to throw this event, and we are lucky also because like post COVID, Singapore opened up so much more to pop up parties, and there's this whole new generation of ravers. So we actually we get a lot of like people who come to Busi Temple and they're like, this is our first rave, oh, nice. this is our first ever like going out. Mm -hmm. So we are really happy like we get to mold the younger generation like that. Yeah. Now I sound very old, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like we just like yeah. Overall, we're we're pretty happy with that. Bro, you have a day job. You're also a DJ. Uh, you're running the collective as well. Uh, you're throwing events now, and we all know how events have their own hardships. Ever consider doing this full-time, bro? Like, completely leaving what you're doing and then focusing on passion. Doable or not, in your opinion? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, if you, as a DJ, like, if I just focus on DJing and producing, you can't really make money in Singapore because, like, the base rate is too low. You can't, unless, like, you go to headline a huge club, but even then, they always play locals less, mm -hmm. and then they pay the headliner mm -hmm. like from overseas way more. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, I can't make a living. Like the amount I get paid is just to buy some like chicken rice. No, no, so <laughs> no, I just to buy this one thing on Lazada. That's all. But generally, like no. In fact, I probably spend more DJing because now I'm like so into it. I buy vinyls, I buy equipment. Yeah. I'm broke. <laughs> it's, an hobby. it's really expensive hobby. Um, but I don't know, maybe in another country it's possible, mm. but it's also very tiring. And then you have to be, if you do music as a profession, then you also lose a bit of like the magic of it. Mm -hmm. Because then you have to like do commercial gigs, you have to do gigs you don't even want to be there. Yeah. And yeah, I think for me, like the priority, like I said, is like really to play for the community and for the vibe that I enjoy. Mm. Of course, like I won't say no to gigs that, uh, people ask me to play and maybe it's like 
some random club. Mm-hmm. But uh, to do it full time, I think it's impossible. But I really respect like Sivanesh. Mm-hmm. He does it full time, yeah. and he's so good. Like really, I don't even listen to house music that much. But every time I see him DJ, I really enjoy it. And he really makes it work. Like he goes plays so many places. It's like he really like uh, works so hard. So I really respect people like that in the industry. Moving forward, bro, uh, what's in store for Busi Temple and yourself? Uh, you guys have an event coming up. You guys want to do a shout out? Uh, if people want to attend it, just do a shout out on uh, like where they can get tickets, what's it called, what can they expect? Uh, if I'm a first time comer to your parties, what am I in store for, bro? Okay, yes. So uh, our next party is on 21st October at T Works. So it's called Little Fantasies Chrysalis. So it's a continuation of our series that we started in March, which is the whole concept of like, um, what does it mean to be um, like a femme and a f- femme fatale, like the concept of femininity mm-hmm. and all these aspects that involve it. So we really try to push the concept of uh, like, not just, because I think the first Little Fantasies, it was more of like, um, kind of like a bit, uh, like, not, okay, wait, let me think. Like, femme fatale in a sense, like, like Black Widow vibes, this kind of uh, female figure that's, that's deadly but very uh, sensuous. And then now we're trying to, like, push it further to be like, uh, what does it mean in, in, like, a concept that's not even human or, like, uh, beyond that? And what to expect our party is just, like, uh, expect to be, like, really surprised by the everything, the vibe, and, uh, of course, like, queer, femme, non-binary to the front. And yeah, just really enjoy yourself because like another thing that we introduced at Father's Womb is this concept of like the sanctuary space. Yes, because uh, I, me and Kai, we, we decided to do that because I was saying like a lot of clubs in Singapore, there's no space to just chill other than the smoking corner. Mm. And in like other countries, like Europe especially, it's really important to have like a chill zone. They have like cultures and stuff. That's where people like talk and they make friends. Mm-hmm. So we were like, we have to do this. We are, so we started it with Father's Womb. So we're going to continue with Little Fantasies. So we li- like really encourage people to come a bit earlier, like maybe 9, 10. Yeah, we, can't, we have to start early because of license things. Yeah. And then you can like, we can do makeup together, we can like chat. That's how we like build a community of our audience as well. And yeah, just like go all out, have a lot of fun. Nice, and come for our party, yeah, yeah. Share with me the ticketing link and the flyer and I will have it at the end of the video. Um, bro, what's in store for like, where do you see the community going? Bossy Temple's community and yourself as a DJ as well, bro. Uh, what's the goal, man, in three to five years or two to three years, there has to be a goal that you guys are working towards, right? Um, where do you see it going, man, personally and for the community? Okay. Right now, I just live day to day. <laughs> like, I'm like, I need to finish this and that. And that. Okay, but no, for Busi Temple, there is like a vision that at least for the next year, we are, we are fellows with T-Works. Mm-hmm. So we're under this PERFORM fellowship. And they, they've been so kind to us to like give us this venue. I mean, like, uh, and support for having our events. So under this fellowship, like we have a few plans that we release online, but mainly it's like trying to engage all our audience and find out like what they would like about our parties, try to have some workshops, like may- maybe have some DJ workshops to also teach other uh, of the, the younger community to DJ and have their own parties. Mm-hmm. And then also, f- I think we're gonna do like two big events or like a few more next year and try to just increase the scale, see what kind of worlds we can build within the uh, T-Work space. And yeah, other than that, in, other than this October party in December, we're gonna have another one. And it's really exciting, so keep it free. December 16th, uh, we're gonna have it at Modular. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, okay. and yeah, I think that's it. Like, just try to build bigger worlds and include all our community. And also the one thing that like Xenon started, Madam Moksha, which is really good, is they they're very good at networking with like Southeast Asia. They always go on like I don't know Tours, their uh, trips <laughs> and make a lot of friends. And we get we managed to get them to like come to DJ here. So we're building like this Southeast Asia queer techno scene, mm-hmm. and we want to like explore that more next year too. Yeah. Like maybe do Busi Temple overseas, wow. uh, but like I don't know, not nothing confirmed. But definitely, like, uh, 
I think sometimes there's too much of a focus on like what is Berlin doing or mm. Europe. Uh, and even like myself, because I started in Berlin, I, I know like I can be biased that way. But being in Busi Temple and seeing all these other DJs in Southeast Asia, um, it's really inspired me. So actually like the set that I'm going to play, most of it is local. Okay, like half, maybe half or one, one third mm. is local, local collectives. So either Singapore or I think maybe one or two tracks from Vietnam. I can't remember, but most, a lot of Singaporean uh, artists and producers. So I don't know if everyone knows, but like Baron Sector, Ahmad, uh, I asked him for some tracks, so I'm going to play them. And then Irfan Infra24, I also asked him for some tracks, so I will, I play, I will play that. And then what else? Yeah, like I just really feel it's, it's the time for us to support local producers, especially for techno, because techno is so, there's already one million techno songs done by white people. Mm. We can like do our own and play our own. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I like that, supporting our local community, bro. That's what it's all about. Uh, basically, you answered my last question, Dila. I, oh. I was going to ask you, like, have you prepared a set? What are you going to play? But yeah, you answered that. Uh, bro, if people are not at your parties, where can they listen to you? You want to do a shout out on your social handles uh, oh. for the community and yourself as well, your SoundCloud. Yeah. Wait, maybe I talk a bit about my set. Because ah. I. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to, like, include people in the local scene, but also, like, artists that have touched my life in a way. So one is Cloudy Cool. Mm -hmm. So she's like a friend that is so random because she played at Little Fantasy's party. And then like, we don't have the budget for hotels, so she stayed at my house. Wow. Then we became friends because she stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And until now, we became like really good friends. So we like Skype and stuff, which is really funny. And it happened to Zenon also that uh, they met Victoria, Rampage Goddess. Mm -hmm. Then they became like good friends. So it's really nice like, uh, to get to play music made by friends. So uh, Victoria, Rampage Goddess, I also play, I think, two tracks by her. And it's really nice because it's like, you see your friends producing, DJ, and then you get to play their tracks. It's like very fulfilling. Mm. Compared to like, I'm playing this track from this white, the yeah. Berlin DJ that I don't even know, mm. 15,000 miles away. Yeah. And yeah, like, I think for me, like every set uh, has to be like a story. And like, it's kind of like music in classical music as well. Like every, it has to like build to a certain point and then there's a climax, probably like two thirds true near the end. And then you like release a bit, you release the tension and then you like end off. So that, that's what I'm gonna play for my set. Like this kind of journey through different kinds of techno in Singapore, uh, a lot of like this classic minimal sound, but also like hard techno. Cause I know like a lot of people now they are like playing like super fast hard techno, but in the Southeast Asia scene, it's it's a bit of like mix of hard and experimental. Mm. So it can be a bit tough to like do it in a club, but I like practice a bit, so I think it will go well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my social handles is like how wrong on Instagram. So H O W R like zero N G, cause mm. it's the O slash but they don't have that on Insta. Oh, okay. And actually, the, the, the funny thing about my name is, actually, it's my Chinese name. I was going to ask you. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. My name is like Hao yeah, Rong. It's like Hao Rong with mm. H-A-O-R-O-N-G. Mm. And I started this like name or project in Berlin because like my white friends there, when they say my Chinese name, Hao Rong, they just say Hao Rong, Hao Rong. Mm. Then it sounds like Hao Rong. Yeah. So it's like a play. <laughs> it's quite dumb, but it's funny. Nice. Yeah. Well, bro, thank you for coming on the show. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure. And I wish you all the best for the upcoming events. It's going to be kick-ass for sure, bro. Um, right about now, guys, before you turn up your headphones, you sit back, please go online, support our artists, buy them tickets for the events, show some love, spread some love, uh, like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, about there, lah, around 60, 60 plus, lah. Yeah, okay, see how see see how wrong smooth. Uh so yeah guys, sit back, relax, turn up the headphones right about now. We've got 60 minutes of pure bliss coming your way from my buddy How Wrong from Busi Temple. Take it away, bro. The ground shifted beneath her feet. Could she move them as well? 
It had been hard to get the others to hear her out initially. She felt instead release. Some of us had to get free, and some of us might. This liberation feels like a crush. My heart is hurting, she thought. I'd want it more than anything, she thought. She played out the serenity there before, sun drawn to her skin like a magnet, like a knowing, like an old friend, the salty preserve on her brow, running, running across her mind, clean like a mind she could taste that serenity. Her blood sugar dropped. It aches to know. And yet, there was a pleasure to the stepping through it. The liberation, feeling the ground crunch. My heart is racing, she thought. I'd want it more than anything, she thought. Somewhere, perhaps right at that moment, or even right at that space, someone was and had been right there with her. Like a knowing, like an old friend. The wild was a serenity. Clean like a mind. And when she can no longer sense, if the other can then pace, she found her own. And there was some pleasure in stepping through it.
your bitches at my leisure. Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. Them basic bitches wear that shit so I don't even bother. I put that on my partner. I put that on my family. Oakland City represented. Dress me as your majesty. Yeah, you can kiss the ring, but you can never touch the crown. I smoke a million swish and blunts and I ain't never coming down. Bitch, you ain't no Barbie. I see you work at Arby's. Number two, super size. Hurry up, I'm starving. Gnarly, radical. On the block, I'm magical. See me at your college campus, baggy full of Adderalls. Call me if you need a fix, call me if you need a boost. See the mother chicken heads, they don't ever leave the coop. I'm in the coop cruising, I got the stolen plates. Serving all the fiends over there by the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm colder than the fridge and the freezer. I'm snatching all your bitches at my leisure. Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, 